I, I just have a, um, a penchant for being politically incorrect. Uh, and I apologize remotely for this, but your hair looks lovely today. <laughs> Our next uh, awardee and speaker uh, has the title of honorable. We throw that title around and put it in front of anybody's name who's elected to anything. Uh, we have an appointed dog catcher here in town, and we put honorable in front of his name. But in this instance, our city councilwoman is honorable. She is a mother, she is loving and kind, and she is inspirational. Uh, she was elected to city council so long ago that we call it ancient history. <laughs> but she also was the first female, African-American female, to serve on our city council. And most of us don't think of politicians serving. We think that they sit in a place of power and legislate. But she is truly one who has served. He said, well, how has she served? Well, she attended all the meetings, first of all. That's service in and of itself. But she has gone out after the official meeting and met with everyone else. She met with the Girl Scouts. She met with the, uh, the teenage girl. She met with those expected mothers. She, she had a penchant for meeting with community people. And she is one, as with Reverend Utley, that's not above lording over but she is one walking and working with. Now, there's some who will walk with you, but they won't work with you. She is known to be one to work with. And uh, I'm just so um, excited about her experience in becoming a lawyer because there are so many things that we can say about lawyers today. But here is a lawyer with integrity. Here is a lawyer with loving kindness. And here, would, here is a lawyer who is prepared when she goes to court and she represents her client. And we're just so excited about what she has done in the legal field. And she has gone so far as to inspire others and mentor them so that they might be able to learn the ins and outs of matriculating. You heard the word. Matriculating through law school. But her greatest and most starring achievement is to be married. And some of you ladies may frown and say, well, are you going back to something in the 30s saying she was married? Is that something? She's a housewife? Yes, she is. She is married to Jamie L. Devine. And she doesn't mind letting you know that she is a wife and mother. Yeah. And uh, she tells me that she is completely submitted. But I know that how she thinks so fast, moves so correctly, that maybe she's submitted, but she's a little ahead of Jamie. <laughs> and, and I've watched him uh, being directed by his wife. Uh, and he hesitates for a moment, and she's already given him direction, and he thought it was his thought. She is so proud of Tamir, Jade, and Jameson. And uh, she said this is her crowning achievement. For this achievement in her children will be in this generation and her grandchildren in the next and the great-great-grandchildren. So she takes time to spend with her children so that they will have the mother's touch. They will have a mother's love. They would know what it is to be loved so that in coming generations, they will be able to love. She also asked us to uh, acknowledge that James Hendry was born into heaven in August 2014. And she asked us to mention that because there are so many young ladies today uh, who are having children and the children are not able to be born alive or they don't live long. And uh, if any of you ladies have experienced this, the loss of a baby is perhaps the greatest loss of all. And there is a certain amount of help that we, husband and wife, need in the loss of a newborn baby. And she wants us to know that she is available. Won't you welcome our honorable <laughs> Tamika Devine. Yes, we love you. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everybody. 
it is an honor and a privilege to be here giving honor to God who is the light of my life and, and allows me and gives me the strength to do everything that I do. So Reverend, um, Bishop Redford asked me before, he said, what drives you? And I talked about my children, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But really, I would not be able to do everything that I do without the strength and the faith that I have in my Lord and Savior and, and how he pushes me and actually directs me to do certain things that sometimes I'm like, really, God, you want me to do something else? Um, but I'm always um, obedient, and it's always such a, a blessing. Um, but certainly giving honor to uh, Bishop and Mrs. Redford, and thank you so much uh, for inviting me. Christy Savage, my good friend, and, and sometimes I say my boss because she tells me what to do. I thank her for her invitation and asking me to be here. Um, and I brought my phone up here so I can stay on, on target. Um, and I will tell you guys that so uh, I was asked to do to talk um, about what who inspires me um, and how I inspire others, and I'm, I'm going to touch on that a little bit. But I, I wrote a blog earlier this week talking about um, using that saying. Um, well-behaved women seldom make history. Well, as you can hear, I'm a, uh, a history maker, so you can imagine I'm not always well-behaved. So, <laughs> so I'm going to deviate a little bit from the instruction just because there's certain things that the Lord has placed on my, li uh, my heart to share with you guys, and I'd like to be able to do that, and, and certainly, hopefully, through those words will inspire you as well. Um, but as Reverend Jackie, you know, my mom is, is who inspired, inspired and continues to inspire me, work really hard. When I think about uh, an example of a mom, I mean, she was the Girl Scout mama, the football mama. She was any and everywhere that we needed her to be. Uh, but she also was a devoted wife and working hard to build her own place in, in her um, in her um, business and so right now she's actually the longest serving African-American female um, State Farm agent in the state um, and she was one of the first African-Americans to actually get a State Farm agency so you know she always inspired me and so I always work really hard uh, to really um, to, to be an example like she was but um, when I was thinking about what I wanted to share with you and just kind of a, a, a talk that I've given a couple times during Women's History Month is really uh, going back to Esther 414 and thinking about how Mordecai told Esther that she was, she was um, made queen for such a time as this. And so I just wanted to kind of bring with you guys a, a few, few words just about such a time as this because we hear a lot as we hear about what um, Women of Influence is doing and the Daughters of Ruth and um, everything that City Light is doing. It is so needed in this community. Um, and we are all, I think a lot of us, we just, we wake up, we see the news and, you know, between, you know, no matter what your political persuasion is, you know, you got to admit there's some craziness happening in Washington. So you wake up and you see that and all this stuff with R. Kelly and, you know, and then, you know, of course, we, we've got um, black men who continue to be shot and killed in this country. Um, there are so many things happening. It is easy to wake up and be disheartened to be discouraged, to feel like, oh my gosh, what is going on? And it's easy, Bishop Redfern, as you, you talked about when you were growing up, it's easy sometimes to say, is there really a God? You know, how can all this stuff be happening? Where is God? Why is he allowing this stuff to happen? And even when um, Jamie and I lost our son, James Henry, and I, I shared uh, um, in the book that we wrote, I never question God as opposed to most of the women in my support groups that they question God. And, you know, I didn't lose faith, but I, I, I had to under, I had to figure out why is this happening and what is the bigger goal. And so I have to share with you that no matter what's going on in our communities, there are there's a reason for it. And there is an opportunity for us to be obedient to to God and to be the light that our community needs, whether it is speaking out politically, whether it is uh, making sure that we are volunteering within our communities and we are being that extra mom and aunt and grandmother to those children who may not have someone. Um, those are the things that I think we were built for such a time as this. And so I just kind of wanted to um, to share with you kind of my thoughts on how I think we all can be an inspiration, not through our words, but through our actions. What we are showing people, what we're doing, how we are living our lives for God, glorifying him and making sure that we're also in the, in the process making our communities better. Um, and so as I was sitting around, I was thinking about stuff and actually hearing um, 
you know, uh, Christy talk about all the work that is being done. Um, there's so much that needs to be ha happening within all of our communities. And, and I thought about the colony. I don't know if anybody, um, I, I do some volunteer work for Watkins Nance, which is the elementary school that a lot of the kids from a colony go to. And um, a little plug for the city, we actually just started a child savings account program. So as you guys are inspiring these kids to go to college, we are starting them in um, at kindergarten with a savings account to help pay for college, technical school, or to start a business. And so um, I'm very uh, proud of that. That's the, one of my projects that we're in the first year of the pilot. But you know, when we work, um, when I go into school and I talk and I talk to the principal, who's an amazing principal, she tell, shares with me the challenges that they have. Kids come to school with lots of baggage from what they're experiencing. And so um, it was shared with me a video um, that apparently made viral, that even Snoop Dogg tweeted it back in November, and I don't know if anybody has seen this, but there was a video of two of the moms from uh, the colony fighting. And instead of someone fighting it, uh, uh, breaking it up, so instead of someone calling the police, they watched it and they videoed it and they uploaded it to social media. Um, and so one of the children came in the next day and was crying because his mom was in a fight, and, and so the teacher had to deal with all of this. So I really thought, you know, wow, this has just got to be an abnormal you know, situation. This doesn't happen all the time. Well, then fast forward a month later in December, I was volunteering at my child's school at Logan Elementary just around the corner, and I was talking to the principal, and he said, oh, yeah. He said, oh, he thought, he thought when I said the video, he thought I was talking about his video. And I'm like, he started saying some things. I was like, no, that's not what I saw. He said, oh, he said, well, you hadn't seen the video yet. And he shows me a video um, of a massive fight over at Riverside Apartments, which is probably a stone's throw from where we are right now. And it was like 20 or 30 moms fighting with bats and sticks. Um, and even to one part, he, I'm watching it and I'm terrified. And he's like, wait for it, wait for it. And then I get a little bit, it gets there. You see this little boy, heck, couldn't have been more than seven, walk over and starts punching another a woman who's on the ground, someone else's mom. And so the principal explained to me that the next day, that child got into a fight. And then they had to, you know, some issues there at the school. And so he was like, this is what we deal with every day. So then we wonder why our children are not learning. You know, so I share with you those experiences just about there is so much happening right here within our community that we all can be a beacon of light. We can be volunteering at the schools. We can be mentors. We can support these families as to what they need because this is what they're growing up in. This is what they know. This is what they've taught, been taught. And so if we're going to break that cycle, We've got to understand how do we go in and figure out what they need. Not again, as Chrissy said, telling them what they need, but figuring out what they need and how we as a community can support it. And the city can't do it all. Law enforcement can't do it all. The churches can't do it all. But together, together we can really make a difference. So in my last couple minutes, I hadn't even gotten my three points. I got three minutes left, so I'm going to give you <laughs> one point for, per minute. But I just wanted to share with you three things that I, I feel like we all can do to, to um, show that we were, were made for such a time as this and really do our work. First of all, and Ms. Luella talked about this, first we need to go to God first and ask what we're to do. People talk to talk about what I do all the time, and, and Bishop Redford was like, "How do you do it all and do all this stuff?" And I'm gonna tell y'all, y'all could be y'all be surprised if I did everything that was either asked of me or that I get an idea about. I would be like crazy. So I know I do a lot, but these are things that I, I pray on, and I certainly know that this is the way God wants me to do. And I don't do everything. So just think about the fact that we all want to do stuff. But we got to recognize where our gifts and our talents are and where our support needs to be. Yeah, we and, and go to God and ask, and he will tell you how you can be supportive. You know, my, my gift and talent may be to be the, the advocate and be out there and, and bringing attention to an issue. Someone else's may be, you know, raising money to support a particular thing. Someone else may be working with the kids. Someone may be working with the moms. But figure out, go to God and figure out where can I be of help and, and be obedient to where he's directing you and, and for you to go. Second, don't underestimate the power of one voice. Um, and so Bishop Rep. Vernon Ms. Luella talked about Jasmine and her seeing a need in, in that community and saying, I want to make a difference. 
imagine how many nine-year-olds say, oh, wow, that's a shame, and they go on, and, you know, because they just don't know. I mean, but imagine the power of that one voice, that one beautiful little voice and the difference that she is making. And so we all have the power of that one voice. Um, I was watching a story last night on NBC, and they were talking about young young girl who um, was was mad that Steph Curry's shoes weren't in the girls section, and she, they should be in the girls section. She wrote a letter to Steph Curry, and not only has he designed shoes for girls, but he allowed her to come in and design a store to show, to show them in. That's the power of that one voice, that one little girl. We all have a voice, and we all have a power. We cannot underestimate the power of us as a single person to make a difference. And imagine when we get with like-minded people, the, the difference that we could be making. And then my third thing is don't ever be discouraged. Anything worth doing, anything that um, may be a challenge, it's, it's going, we're going to have difficulties. We will be discouraged. There will be things that happen. I mean, I just think about in my life, um, you know, I've spoken out on issues before um, that other folks didn't agree with, and I've actually lost lifelong friendships that, you know, God then revealed to me that they weren't real friendships because I wouldn't have lost them. But I lost, like, what I thought lifelong friendships because I took a political position that others didn't want. And that could have discouraged me. I could have said, okay, I'm not speaking out again. But that's not me. That's not what I'm here to do. Um, you know, B Bishop Redfern talked about losing our child. When Jamie and I lost James Henry, you know, we know so many couples that their their marriages were broken up about it. People who lost their faith in God because they didn't see, understand how God could take a baby. But I know that through my loss, I have been able to be an inspiration to other people, people I had never even met because they saw the way, um, although I would not have wanted to go through that publicly, people saw the way our faith was strengthened and that we used the loss of our son to actually be a voice for other people who lose children through stillbirth. So that is definitely um, something Thing. Um, and then even in, in my business, I've lost business when people don't like the votes that I take or what I do. Um, but I can't let that discourage me. I can't let that say, you know, it's very convenient. Um, and when we st stay comfortable, we know that then the work of the Lord is not being done. But when we break ourselves outside of our comfort zone, when we speak out, when we don't get discouraged and recognize that challenges um, are meant to be overcome, then we will be able to really make a difference. And at the end of that, we will be able to not only make a difference within our community, but make a difference in this country and in this world. So with that, I am going to close and I wanna thank y'all so much. I know I deviated from the inspiration, but what I wanna leave with you though is that what my inspiration is, is the folks that I serve every day. That's what drives me to do what I do. And I hope that they are inspired by me not getting tired, me not giving up, me pushing forward to do things for the folks in our community. And that's how we all can be an inspiration to other folks. So thank you and God bless. <laughs>